In the course of picking various random reviews in the past, I have looked over Universe Hound more than once and thought, hmm, I'd really like to talk about that toy. Oh, wait, I already did. It was a rushed review about an eternity ago. And today I did the same thing, but ultimately decided, screw it. Let's just talk about it again. We'll call it a random re-review. I've done that before, accidentally. But this time intentional, because even when I did this as a rush review, I often thought 30 seconds just wasn't enough time to articulate what I liked about this toy. So we're going to go ahead and see how it's held up over the years. As you can see, Hound is a rather modern looking Jeep vehicle. Quite cool, quite sleek, but still has some heavy duty uh, elements to it that really kind of helps convey the fact that it's still the same character. This big heavy brush guard in the front in particular. He definitely no longer looks like a military jeep. Something more civilian, something more casual. With brief little bits of things like, you know, light bar on the top and a little star painted on like a, like his original form and the missile launcher on the top of one of the seats. Never, never mind that. It's a civilian vehicle. Trust me. But it is a nice looking one. It's a nice little upgrade of his original G1 form. I like the color too. It's a nice bright green. It doesn't go into that military dark tones or olive green that they tend to do. And it's way brighter than Hound typically is. Even the Hound in the cartoon was not quite this shade. So it comes off quite vibrant and quite cartoonish in appearance. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. And when we get to robot mode, I'll explain why. Aside from the fact that, yeah, he's got plenty of green on him, you get some painted details like the silver around the, bo around the baseboard here, which is the same as what the brush guard got. And the rear bumper, also with the same coloring. Red tail lights, back to the front. You can see some translucent blue poking through there for the headlights and some black overlaid for the grill. That same blue is used here up top for the windscreen or windshield and uh, the paint matching here because this piece is also translucent blue and painted over to match. On, the, on my viewfinder right now I can tell the difference quite easily but in person it's actually a pretty close match and one of Hasbro's better jobs of getting the two to look alike. Inside bright green, uh, bright white, Ooh, too much green on the brain, bright white seats. They are bucket seats apparently as they're molded quite heavily. And that me an open seat means you need a dashboard in the front. It does have the wheel. It has a little bit of dust on it, as well as a few uh, blank gauges and such. There's even a little compartment over here for the glove compartment, which is kind of a neat, if useless, little touch. I like when they go to this level of detail, just because there's no top to cover up all the vehicle bits. I think it inspires a little bit more creativity in design. It does come with a few shortcuts. There's no paint on the rims or anything like that, but the vehicle itself is nice and solid. Nothing feels really hollow about him. The Universe 2 is still pretty good about this, and he rolls exceptionally well on his pinned-in wheels. So, about as much as I could ask for out of that. The top gun, which, uh, you know, make it a hologram emitter or, or a cannon, whatever you want to call it, can peg off it comes tabbed in it goes into those little slots so it can attach to either and you can actually peg it in if you so desire to okay I could have sworn that was a peg in never mind I'm not good at this so it is what it is so you can at least match his G1 look while having a big turret sticking out of the back interesting there's that military shade of olive green I was looking for but that's not the most interesting thing about the toy. The most interesting thing about the toy was what it came with. This guy. Ravage. Because everyone wanted some kind of new... Everyone loved the old cassettes, didn't we? And we liked Ravage because of Beast Wars. But um, no real way of making a new sound wave that turned into a cassette player. And we've worked around that many different ways over the years. And now we're just going to make him another cassette player. Because screw it at this point. But... Uh, before all of that, Universe 2 gave us Ravage along with Hound in a strange pairing that references the original series a little bit. But hey, for the most part, it's just an excuse to make a new Ravage toy. It's not bad, 
jet black plastic all the way around, a little bit of silver on the edges. I will say the more complex engineering does not lend itself completely well because he does have uh, a lot of exposed gaps and hinges and such. So you can definitely tell he's not a cassette this time. Whereas the original was actually quite similar to a mini cassette. In order to actually get the two to cooperate with each other, you can actually peg, uh, flip out these little tabs and they peg into the little, ah, come on. They peg into the little cassette reel holes on Ravage. And then he's nice and secure and not going anywhere. Though I don't think he's gonna sneak into Autobot base looking this big as a cassette. Just, just saying. It's not, I just don't think it's that great of a disguise, really. So that was a little little thing they did just for the excuse of making them interact. But Hound is still the main event, so let's get Hound transformed and actually see what the big deal to him is. I'm going to start by flipping that out and unpegging this, which will make all of this start to unfold. Need a little bit of clearance to get these parts out and that's oh come on not really working you know what i didn't do because i wanted to show this off and i was hoping i could actually get through the transformation without having to do this because it's one of my favorite little pieces of engineering i have to fold the seats down first in order to get them out of the way i didn't want to do that i was hoping i could clear them out without that because it actually becomes the thighs of the robot mode very smoothly. I've always loved that bit of engineering to this toy. All right, so with the legs straightened out and all that, I'm going to bring the pelvis piece down on double hinge. Be careful with that, it's a very small double hinge. And with that, arms coming out this way. This is very G1, very alternator style of hiding away the arms. I'll go ahead and rotate them this way to get them back into place. From here, you need to get uh, the wheels unpegged. Mm. Once again, we're on double hinges here. A little bit more sturdy than the ones on the pelvis. With all that, swing all of this down. Go ahead and flip up the head to get it out of the way. From here, I'm going to hinge all of that down into place. Now we can bring the arms into their proper position. Flip the hands out. Little tabs for your fingernails. And we just clean up the back by folding in the wheels like so. Neat little backpack. Close that up. And like that we have our Deluxe Class Universe 2 Hound in all of his glory. He's not quite G1 accurate. He's missing the green shoulders and such, which kind of comes with some modern-day engineering and kind of comes with a modern-day vehicle. But for the most part, I really, really like how this toy turns out. This was in Universe 2 when the toys were a little bit movie-inspired as far as having like ludicrous levels of design and more complicated engineering than necessary. I'm looking at you, Ironhide. But this one seems to be a little bit different than the rest, which is why I like talking about this toy so much. I'm going to give you a shot of the head. It's very squared off, very cartoonish. He definitely looks the part of Hound. Hound never really had any like major detailings or anything. It's pretty standard as far as head design. But that also makes him pretty hard to miss. So the head done right is a head done simple. At least there's a little bit of blue light piping for you if you like that and some silver as well so looking at the robot mode we do have a little bit of new detail we've introduced a bit more yellow to liven up his color scheme a little bit of bands on the arms and as well as on the kneecaps for the most part most of the details are shared from the vehicle mode which if you've watched enough of by now you'll know i prefer it that way you know it's uh it's a little bit more of a skill to turn a vehicle into a robot rather than have a robot folded away in a bunch of shells of vehicle. But we do have a lot more black exposed here. So we at least have a lot of that green from vehicle mode broken up now. And yeah, the thighs are white and I still really like that piece of engineering. What really gets to me about this 
style is look how smooth all the lines are. Look at the detailing on the arms or the fact the lack of it. It's very flat. They didn't go heavy on big mechanical details anywhere on this toy. Now, if you look at other Universe 2 releases, you know, uh, Sideswipe, Sunstreaker, and all that, uh, you're going to see that a lot. But not here. He's pretty clean all over. He has no real use of shell and very little kibble. It's extremely clean. And it reminds me of the engineering they had in Classics rather than Universe 2. Whereas Universe 2 still had a little bit of movie design influence going on because that's what they were designing primarily. This feels like it would have fit right in with Optimus, Bumblebee, and the rest of the Classics line as that more cartoon accurate, more sleek and smooth and modernized look without going into the heavy amounts of detail. Now, we do have this to deal with. This little hollow emitter slash gun slash whatever you pretend it to be. It kind of clips in over his shoulder, but this is something the toy's never really done well, as it does not quite clip as solidly as you want, and it's kind of finicky about pointing forward. So it's a little bit off-center, and it's a little bit annoying. It kind of pegs in on the other side the same way, but you kind of have the same results here, which is unfortunate. It's probably the one major downside to this toy, but that's what we have a handle for. So, yeah, just go old-school handheld gun. Why not? Well, because it's not entirely accurate but hey it definitely works for articulation we do have a ball joint in the head which is kind of cool a ball joint on the shoulders as well as 90 degree elbows and a bicep swivel we can also kind of hinge the wrist down or inward rather if you so desire no waist ball joints in the hips mine are a little bit loose and i can't remember if that's how they were originally or not or if just years of age and play kind of took its toll because I actually did play with this one quite a bit. 90 degrees at the knees, a rock in the ankle, as well as a tilt, so plenty of movement there. So while he may not have the military stylings, he can definitely form some pretty aggressive poses should you want him to do so. He's ready for war, and that's what I expect out of a military jeep, even when he's not technically a military jeep. But this still leaves us with a little bit undiscussed, which goes for his uh, his pack-in counterpart, Ravage. Now, I kind of briefly looked him over, and one of the things that was actually really cool about this release, it's actually compatible with G1 Soundwave. This is from uh, the commemorative series Soundwave. This one uh, came out around the same time, and you'll see fits quite well inside the compartment. Now, this is uh, the U.S. commemorative release, which means it has the double-wide compartment from Sound Blaster, but the cassette is also compatible with the G1 Soundwave as well, which I think is entirely unnecessary, but an extremely cool bit of engineering for them to do as a nice little bonus. So, with that out of the way, we need to transform Ravage here. I'm going to start by rotating out one of his thighs and folding it down and then we can do the other like so and we get the little legs out and while we are at it uh, I need to unfold the tail you can already tell this is way more complex than the old one was boom, boom, boom. out just like that everything folds out quite neatly and nicely and there we have our universe slash classics 2.0 Ravage looking quite cool. He does way better job than the G1 toy of having the right proportions for a Jaguar. You can see he's angled in the right spots. He's got some heavy thighs for fast running and some nice detail going on. The face is far fiercer than G1 and quite thin. You could easily mistake this for, I don't know, either like a rat or even a bird head if the, all you saw was the head itself vaguely beakish, Yeah, so the head's not too thick, and it doesn't really do a good job of uh, separating out the teeth or anything, and they're just kind of big buck teeth. But I think the big impressive part about him is just the level of engineering to actually get a very nice-looking G1 Ravage out of a little tiny thing that was 
the same size as the original Ravage. This is one of those things that shows you just how far the level of engineering on a Transformer toy has come. And then the Masterpiece toy did it again and made it even better than this one. So, big props to that. Now, for other features, well, you do have articulation, neck hinges up and down, and you get a little bit of back and forth around some of these parts, around the hips and the knees, as well as the front elbows here. Not a whole lot, because he's flat-footed no matter what, so there's not a whole lot of posing to do. But for little bonuses, these are actually the same size as G1 Ravage's ports. So, if you happen to have a G1 Ravage, you can plug his rockets into his hips. That's another cool little feature they didn't need to do, but they did it anyway, and that makes him stand out quite a bit. So that, my friends, is Universe Hound and Ravage. Quite an odd couple to have come in the same box, but beneficial nonetheless. I think Ravage stands pretty well. Um, if you happen to get Commemorative Soundwave, they make a good pairing, and uh, Hound himself is excellent. Extremely clean toy, extremely solid build, tra uh, transformation with some clever tricks, but nothing overcomplicated. He's right at home in a classics collection and does not look out of place in the slightest. It's too bad this is one of those molds that it's really, really hard to reuse, because I probably would have bought this thing a dozen times over. And coming with a little Jaguar probably made that even harder still. Well, Bakon did it anyway.